Hey guys, so if you're in the market for a wireless system, and that could be a wireless microphone, a wireless for your guitar, bass, or instrument, or a wireless in your monitor system, you might notice that there are very cheap systems for as low as like $40, and they go all the way up to multiple thousands of dollars and everything in between. So what are the differences between those? Does everybody need to spend that much money on a wireless system, or can you get away with more of the budget-friendly stuff? I have reviewed a ton of wireless systems on this channel for microphones, instruments, and in-ear monitor systems. I'm also quite obsessed with wireless. I use wireless basically every show. I honestly couldn't even count the number of different wireless units I've used over the years. And so in this video, we're gonna discuss what the difference is between all of those price points, what you get, what's different about them and see which one is right for you, your budget, and your setup. So in this video, I'm gonna have five different tiers of wireless. Again, this is going to apply to wireless microphones, wireless instruments, guitar, bass, violin, etc., and wireless in-ear monitors. So the five tiers, starting from the lowest to the highest, from the lowest is cheap, next level up is budget-friendly, next level up is entry-level slash mid-tier, next level up is high-end, and the last level is pro-level. There will be a bonus holy grail level, and I'll address that briefly, but for the most part, it's gonna be in those five tiers. And also in this video, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway to one of my subscribers where I'm gonna be giving away the brand new Shure GLXD Plus system. This is a great wireless system. It's a $500 system. I'm gonna be giving it away to one of my subscribers. The giveaway is only gonna be for subscribers. So if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe and let's go ahead and get started. So there are gonna be three specific categories to address within each of the five tiers. I'm gonna address features, I'm gonna address wireless frequencies, and I'm gonna address quality. Features and quality, I think, are gonna be pretty obvious. You know, the higher end stuff is gonna have more features and better build quality and stuff like that. The wireless frequency part is where I think a lot of people don't understand. One of the most important things to know about wireless gear is the more wireless you plan to use on stage at once, the more you need to spend the money in order to get higher end wireless. If you learn nothing else from this video, at least understand that. With wireless frequencies, wireless needs to find a radio frequency to transmit on. It could be 500.100 megahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, 906 megahertz, or 5.8 gigahertz. That is just the frequency that the wireless uses to transmit the signal from the transmitter to the receiver. So depending on where you're playing or performing or using the wireless, there might be other things around you that are using other wireless systems that are in a similar frequency range or sometimes even on that frequency range. The other thing I want you to remember is that the more options that you have for frequencies, the better. If you have a wireless with only four channels, there's only four selectable channels on your wireless, you show up to the show, all four of those channels are already being used by something else in the area, that means you are much more likely to get interference from your wireless. So the more frequency options that you have, the better. I think that's really important to understand for wireless gear. A lot of people think that spending more money will get you a better sound and stuff like that. Not necessarily. It's mostly about wireless frequency coordination. Okay, now that I've gotten that out of the way, let's go over the five tiers. In each of the five tiers, I am gonna give my recommendations of which ones I like personally for microphones, instruments, and in-ear monitors, and I'll have purchase links to all of them down below in the description. So the lowest tier of wireless systems are gonna be the cheap tier. The price point of these wireless are going to run between about 30 to $100, although 100 is actually pretty high for these systems. Some of them are the Swift Audio ones, Guitario ones, Licato ones, Kim of fun. If you go onto Amazon and search for cheap wireless systems, you're going to often find these. So as far as the features, there really aren't many at this price point. Basically, you plug it in, you set a channel, and you hope that it works. You don't get a way to scan for the best frequency. The antennas and the battery are built into the device. So this one right here is one of my favorite ones. This is actually my backup one. I always have it with me. This is the one by Swift Audio. Basically, you just, you turn, you hold the button, you turn it on and you hope that it works. It does have a way to change the channel on the transmitter. If you push the button to change it, it'll change to a different channel on the receiver. But I mean, you don't have anything else beyond that. So as far as wireless frequencies, these have a very limited frequency options. Most of the time it's around four. It can go up to about 20 different channels but that's kind of at the high end. Sometimes a system doesn't even have a way to change the channel. It's on a fixed frequency. So this one is the cheapest in-ear monitor system that I could find. I have a video on this one. It's basically, you just, you turn it on, and you have a button for volume, turn it up or down. If the frequency that it's on is crowded at the place you're playing, you have no way to change that. And another thing about these wireless is that a lot of them, especially at this price point, operate in the 2.4 gigahertz frequency range. I have a whole video dedicated to 2.4 gigahertz. Definitely worth checking out if you have anything on 2.4 gigahertz, but just know that it is a very crowded frequency, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, a lot of things use 2.4 already. There's not a whole lot of room for wireless to operate in there, 
and it is very crowded. So it's one of the least reliable in my experience. Again, check out my video if you want to know more. So as far as quality, it shouldn't be any surprise that these are going to be cheaper. Companies have to think of their budget and stuff. If they're selling you a wireless for $30, they're not going to use high end material. But I will say I've never broken any of these cheap ones, even the really cheap plastic ones. I've brought them on planes. I've flown with them. I haven't broken any of them, knock on wood, obviously. The main thing as far as quality, as far as like the tone and stuff like that, some people with these cheaper ones will say that they have issues with it being too loud, too quiet, or they have an issue with sustain as like a guitar player. Remember, they don't have a way to turn up or down the gain or the level adjustment or something like that. More times than not, these cheap ones will work. And it's a very interesting thing after reviewing these is I'll get a lot of comments saying this worked great with my guitar with active pickups. But then I'll get a couple of people say this does not work at all with my guitar with active pickups. It's definitely an interesting thing. It will work more times than it doesn't. You just have to understand that with limited features, it might not work with your setup. At the same time, like I said, I've flown with these. I also have two singers that I play with and both of them actually have these cheap ones as their main wireless for their guitar system. And they understand if they get there and it doesn't work, they switch to a cable. It is just a risk that you take and you should accept that if you buy something this cheap. So who are these for? So if you're just practicing at home or small acts or playing smaller shows, definitely worth it. One of the most important things is not having a bunch of wireless on stage. I've had a lot of people fall into the trap of, oh, awesome, I can use six of these all at once. Once you start adding a lot of cheap wireless all at once. That's usually when you start to run into problems. I personally don't recommend using more than three of these at once on stage. Can you use more? Sure, some shows you're going to be able to use more. It, wireless frequency is such a complicated thing based on where you go and the area you're playing in and stuff like that. So can you use more than three? Sure, sometimes you won't even be able to use two of them. It really just depends. I personally, just as a guideline, I say don't use more than three of these cheap wireless all at once. Ultimately, this is for anyone who can go, hey, I spent $50 on a wireless system. If it doesn't work, I'm going to switch to a cable. That's a risk I'm willing to take. Should not be doing mission critical gigs on a $50 wireless. I was able to play in the Bahamas with my wife for two weeks earlier this year. It's an amazing trip. And I brought this system and it worked awesome the entire trip. So, you know, th these are still usable. I don't want you to think that it's not usable. I do just want you to understand the limitations. So as far as my recommendations, so as far as microphones, okay, that's kind of a tough one. There's not a whole lot in this price point. However, there is a video that I did on one by Fifine. It's actually pretty impressive. There's quite a few channels. I think there's like 16. That's better than four. It's battery powered. It sounds pretty decent. And I've gigged with it. I've used it for speeches at like weddings and stuff like that. Definitely worth looking into. That'd be the one that I recommend at this price point. I would not do any metal screaming into that microphone though. As far as for guitar, bass, and instruments, I really like this Swift Audio one. That's definitely the one that I recommend the most. For looking for wireless for instruments, I actually have a three-part video series on what is the best cheap wireless system for guitar, bass, and stuff like that. I go over my reasoning why I recommend buying two of these, one on a different frequency. So the Swift Audio operates in 900 megahertz, and then get one by like Licato or Guitaria on 5.8 gigahertz. You have two wireless for under $100. And that way, if you get to a venue and 900 megahertz is crowded and you're having trouble with that, it wouldn't make sense to switch to another wireless on 900 megahertz. So switching to one on 5.8 gigahertz might be a better option. As far as for cheap in-ear monitors, I actually really like this one by Kimafun. It's very, very tiny. Feels cheap, but it has six different channels. It comes with a carrying case. It has earbuds that it comes with it. And I think it's at a good price point. A little bit higher, but it's definitely worth it in my opinion, as far as all of the cheap ones. All right, next tier up, we're looking at budget-friendly wireless. This often is priced at somewhere between 100 to about $250. These are gonna be wireless by brands like Phoenix Pro, Nuex, and X5 and stuff like that. So as far as features, you start to get some more features than just plug it in and hope that it works and set the channel. You start to get external antennas, which are more reliable and can be replaced. Often for in-ear monitors, you now have two inputs, not always, but you start to have two inputs, which is very helpful. Some of them, you are able to change the gain a little bit. So if the signal is too hot, Going into your in-ears, you have a way to adjust that. On the cheaper stuff, you don't. Overall, you do get more features. However, usually at this price point, you do not have a way to scan. You don't have a way to scan for the best channel and set it accordingly. That usually comes in the next tier. So now at this point, we can talk about RF bandwidth, which is just a fancy way of saying the number of frequencies that you have or the range of frequencies that you have. So for example, if you find a system that transmits between 512 and 524 megahertz, that means that your wireless is going to choose a frequency between 512 and 524 in order to 
transmit from the transmitter to the receiver. That means that you have a 12 megahertz bandwidth. So that could start from wherever 470 up to 482 megahertz. That would still be 12 megahertz of tuning bandwidth. That is the width that the wireless has for options on finding a clear signal. So cheaper ones like this usually have around 12 to 24 megahertz of tuning bandwidth. And because of this, that means that you can use more of them at once. You have more frequency options and more of them can be used at once simultaneously. So as far as quality, most of this stuff still feels a little more plasticky. It hasn't really gotten to like metal heavy durability. But like I said, I haven't broken any of these things. So they all still seem to work. This X51 actually is probably the most sturdy out of all the ones in this category. You will find strange artifacts with tone at this price point. Not always. Some people don't, might not even notice. There are small little things. So like the PTU-1U microphone by Phoenix Pro. That one has something really interesting where if you get right on the microphone, it gets really loud. And then when you back away, it gets normal. Little changes like that. Again, still usable. You just have to accept and understand that. So there'll be little things like that, but overall it's still usable. So who is the budget-friendly wireless for? It's a wireless that hits a balance of costs and quality that gives decent performance without breaking the bank. Thank you, ChatGPT, for defining that for me. But overall, I think this is for smaller acts up to middle-sized acts. I don't recommend using more than four to six of these at once. Again, it really depends on the environment. Can you get away with more? Sure. Can some shows give you trouble if you use four to six of them? Sure. This is just a guideline. That's personally about where I would stop using this many wireless. And again, that is dependent on each wireless system, so you are going to have to do a little bit of research on that. But this is for anyone who isn't really ready to commit more than 200 250 bucks on a wireless system. My drum in one of my bands actually uses the Phoenix Pro PTM 10, which is, in my opinion, one of the best in-ear monitor systems as far as a budget one. And he actually words it really well. He's like, I could spend $1,000 on a Sennheiser system. You know, we play a lot. And he goes, I could spend that money or I could just spend 250 on this. Something breaks in it or someone spills a beer on it or something like that. Then I just replace it. It's not going to be the end of the world if something happens to his in-ear monitor system. And he's been using them for two years now, three years and they've worked great. So as far as my recommendations, Phoenix Pro really does a great job in this category. They're one of the best budget-friendly systems for microphones, for guitar, bass, instruments, or for in-ear monitors. They're all great. I have reviewed a ton of their products on my channel. You can check those out. I have a whole playlist on them. And also, if you do decide to purchase something from Phoenix Pro, you can use promo code Scott Yule Music to get 5% off your entire purchase and save even a little bit more money. Details will be down below in the description. So as far as microphones, that PTU-1U is a really good system. It's only like $180. It's a true diversity wireless, which I'm going to get to later. That's something that's usually found in more of the higher end stuff. It does have that interesting proximity effect. That's the only thing that's weird about it. And this one actually does have a way to scan as well, which is pretty rare at this price point. Another thing that I like is that Licato actually makes a wireless XLR adapter. So you can attach it to any microphone, any dynamic microphone. It doesn't have phantom power or anything like that. Although I did review one by Chemifun that does have phantom power if that's what you're looking for. Links will be down below for all of these. But that Licato one is quite affordable. It's usually under $100 actually. So it's a little bit cheaper than this. Just FYI, I'm editing this during Prime Deals Day. So it's not always going to be this cheap. But do keep an eye out, especially for these cheap ones, because a lot of them will go on sale when Amazon does a sale like this. It only does have four channels, but that thing has been rock solid. We've used it a bunch on wireless for our speakers as well as wireless for mics. I remember how I mentioned we went to the Bahamas. That's actually what my wife used on her vocals and it worked great the entire time. We use that one a lot. I have one of them. My singer bought two of them, not because we're using three of them at once. We are not doing that because again, there's only four channels on this one. He just has it as a backup if one of them breaks or if he forgets to charge the battery on it, which again could also be used for a wireless PA system. I do have a video on that and links down below. As far as wireless for instruments, guitar, bass, violin, stuff like that, the Phoenix Pro PTG-10 is a really good one. That one has about 100 frequencies and it does have a way to scan as well, which is really cool. The sound definitely is a bit more compressed. I actually liked the sound of it. The sound from my guitar is definitely more compressed, but it has external antennas, a way to scan. Uh, that one's definitely a really good one as well. It does just have a little bit more of a compressed type of sound. The other one that I really like is by Nuex, and it's this one right here, and it comes in this carrying case, which is used to charge the wireless. So when you're done, you put the wireless back in here, you push this button, 
and you can see that it's charging. So, you know, like, kind of like Apple AirPods, how the case will charge it. That's really cool. It's a really sturdy case, very well built. I really like the new X ones as well as for instruments for guitar and bass. Again, I have videos as well as purchase links for these down below in the description. As far as in-ear monitors, I definitely like the ones by Phoenix Pro. So they have the Phoenix Pro PTM 11, which is cheaper. It is a mono system. The PTM 10 is a little bit more but it's a stereo system. It has a wider tuning bandwidth. I think that one is one of the best ones as far as budget ones. If you really need a cheaper one, the PTM 11 is fine, but I do think that the PTM 10 is worth going for because it has a wider bandwidth of frequencies. It is stereo. It does not have scanning on this one. That It doesn't have a scanning feature. However, the thing is that with a stereo in your monitor system, you can actually get two separate mono mixes sent to two separate receivers. So one transmitter can send two mono in-ear monitor mixes. I have a video on how to do that specifically with the PTM10, but it does work with any stereo in-ear monitor system. That's a great way to save money if you're looking at budget-friendly wireless. But I personally recommend the PTM10. And remember, you can use promo code Scott Yule Music to get 5% off your purchase. I also am a really big fan of the X Vive U4. So I know I did just say that 2.4 gigahertz is one of the most least reliable frequencies, and this one operates in 2.4. This one has worked really well. I haven't really had problems with this one, especially if you're looking for a portable one. This is the transmitter and this is the receiver. Like it's super portable. It's quite reliable. It has six channels, which is good. It's not amazing, but it's been incredibly reliable. So I do also recommend that one as well. Again, just like almost all of these, I have a dedicated video as well if you wanna check it out more. All right, now we're getting into the entry-level, mid-tier level wireless systems. These are gonna run between around 300-ish to about 800-ish dollars. This is gonna include the Shure BLX series, the Shure PSM 300 in your monitors, the Sennheiser XW, X, SW. The Sennheiser XSW in your monitors. As far as features, usually at this price point, almost all of them have a way to scan now, which is awesome. You show up to the show, you push the scan button, it will scan the environment for what channels are available, it will set it, and then you usually sync over infrared to the receiver. Really nice, really helpful. You don't have to just go in blind and just hope that your frequency works. You can scan when you get there and set it to the best channel. That's definitely really helpful. You're also gonna be able to start to see things like you're gonna see an RF meter, you're gonna see an audio meter so you can see if you're clipping or not. You have a way to change the gain, so if the signal is too hot or too quiet, you can adjust that. Antennas almost always can detach here so you can use with like a combiner or something like that, which I'll get to here in a little bit, but you definitely start to get a lot more features at this point. Scanning being the biggest one, that's definitely a huge plus to be able to scan. As far as wireless frequencies, you're definitely starting to get more frequencies here. Remember, the more frequency options that you have, the better the chances that you're going to have your wireless work for you at different shows. At this point, you should be pretty confident that your wireless is going to work in a lot of situations. Again, that depends on how many you use at once, of course. If there's like one to four wireless on stage, you should be pretty confident that at this point, your wireless is almost always going to work. So something that I do want to keep in mind. So the Shure BLXR system, which is one of the best ones that I recommend at this point, if you look it up, it specifically says you can use up to 12 systems per band. So the band is just the range of frequencies. But you'll see that the Shure BLX system has the H9 band, which goes from 514 to 542 megahertz. And then you see the H10 band, which goes from 542 to 572 megahertz. So each of those have a bandwidth of 30 megahertz, but on different frequency ranges. Again, from the bottom to the top is 30 megahertz wide. They just start and end on different spots. That's what bands are. Each system is going to have a different name. Sennheiser will have A band, A plus band, and stuff like that. What's important is the frequency. I do have a video going over bands, groups, and channels, which goes into more detail about that. And you can check that out by clicking up above or down below. So it has a 30 megahertz frequency range, but it says you can use 12 of them all at once. So remember, 12 is in perfect conditions. That means there's no other wireless interference within that frequency range. I personally have the policy of just cutting that in half just to play it safe as a guideline, because most of the time you're not gonna have access to every single frequency. But again, this one says 12, I would cut it in half and do six as the max that you could use at once per band. And if you wanna find out which band you wanna get for the region that you're in, you can go to the Sure Frequency Finder website, and I'll link to this down below, and you can put in you know, the area that you're playing in, or the area that you're based out of. So I'll just put in Denver, Colorado, and which 
product do I want to look for? I'll say the BLX, but if I'm looking for the SLX, I can click that here. But we're talking about the BLX for this one, so I'll click that. And it'll recommend which frequency band to get. That is really helpful that they have that. But this leads to a good question. What if you're touring? If I'm not just playing in Denver, I'm not just playing in Philly, I'm not just playing in Miami, you're taking it all over the place. At that point, do you see why it's valuable to have that wider range of frequencies? So especially if you're playing in different cities, it's much more valuable to have that wider frequency range. Does that make sense? That's why it's definitely worth having more channels. The more you move around, the more unpredictable the RF wireless environment is going to be. So having more channels just ensures that you are more likely that your wireless is going to work. Also something to keep in mind, so since you're starting to get more wireless at this point, make sure you don't put a bunch of them all together in a rack. That's actually one of the worst things that you can do for wireless. I do have a video about five common mistakes when using wireless music gear. This is one of them. Don't put a bunch of wireless in a rack together. You will want to get a combiner or a distributor in order to combine all those antennas down to, you know, a single antenna or a pair of antennas. I have some videos about that. I'll link to those down below as well. You also can get away with just spacing the wireless out on the stage. You know, you don't want to have them all bunched up together. The guitar players on this side and the bass players on this side and the singer's center stage, you can space out the wireless and you can be okay. Man, that was a lot of talk about wireless frequencies. So let's get to quality. So some people are surprised to hear this, but actually the quality from this point on, as far as tone, doesn't really improve. It's actually all good quality, great quality audio at this point on. The audio quality isn't really gonna improve from here. It's already really good. Mostly it's gonna be more features and more wireless bandwidth, which again, is one of the most important things with a wireless, in my opinion. At this point, quality is pretty much top notch. So who is this one for? This is for any hobbyist or semi-professionals who really want to take their wireless seriously, but don't want to spend as much as you want for a high-end wireless system. You're starting to take your wireless pretty seriously at this point. You're not going for the cheap stuff. At this price point, how many can you use at once? This one's kind of probably the most tricky out of all of them. Six to 10, six to eight kind of would be my guess with this. Again, it really depends on the system. Use what I said about, you know, see what they list as how many you can use at once and cut it in half. That's usually what I recommend. But you could get away with like six to eight at this price point. Again, could be more, could be less, depending if it's a really busy environment. So my recommendations for these, as far as microphones or instruments, it's actually the same one. The Shure BLX-R series is one of my favorite ones. Great system. I used the Shure PGX for the longest time. They discontinued that and they switched over the PGX-D. That's still a great system. It does have less number of systems that can be used at once. So I personally just like the BLX-R personally. It's a very solid system. PGXD is also a good one as well. If you do go with the microphone, do go with the SM58. Do not go with the PG58. That microphone sounds a lot cheaper. It has a lot of handling noise. I definitely recommend getting the SM58 for a microphone instead. You will notice that there is the BLX and then the BLXR. The BLXR has the external antennas. I definitely do recommend that one over the tabletop one with the internal antennas. As far as in-ear monitors, this is a tricky one. So it does get up a little bit higher price point. In-ear monitors generally tend to be a little bit more expensive than wireless. So at this price point, I recommend the Shure PSM 300s and the Sennheiser XSW. So the Shure systems are the most expensive, but they are the only ones that have a scan feature at this price point. In-ear monitors for some reason don't have, really have a scan feature around this price point. The Shures are the most expensive, but they have that scan feature, which is such a nice feature. And they're also very easy to scan and sync. The Sennheisers have about the same frequency bandwidth for a cheaper price, but they do not have the ability to scan. So it's kind of up to you. Do you want to save a little bit more money and not have scanning? Or do you want to spend a little bit more and have the ability to scan? Having that scanning from the Shure PSM 300 is definitely a huge plus. All right, so the high-end wireless range. So this is where you really start to get to professional level wireless. These are gonna cost you somewhere between like 600 up to about 1200. Models in here that I really like are the Shure SLXD, the Sennheiser EW100, the Sennheiser EW300 in your monitors, and Electro Voice also has a really nice wireless microphone system I'm gonna address as well. So as far as features, usually at this point, you have a lot of features. Most importantly, you have the way to do frequency coordination. So you can connect these wireless devices together, use them with software, you can scan for the best channel, and it'll deploy all the open frequencies to all the systems that it's connected to. That's the best way to do wireless frequency coordination. You do also start to get more features like you can adjust the RF power. So if you're going further away, you can up the power. You get specific rechargeable batteries. So I use the Shure SLXD for my microphone. It's a great system. It has a specific battery for it. It gives me an exact 
battery reading that's accurate within like 15 minutes. It's rechargeable, which is great. You get more features like that. You also get squelch control often at this price point. Squelch control is really nice. So what it does is it sets a threshold. If the wireless strength is up here, nothing happens. But if the strength of the wireless signal drops below the threshold that you set the squelch at, what it means it's gonna mute the audio instead of what can happen is if you start to lose wireless signal strength, so the RF signal strength drops to a certain point, you can get those static and white noise and stuff like that. Especially with in-ears, that can be really obnoxious. Being able to set the squelch is a very nice feature and that's almost always included at this price point. As far as wireless frequencies, I already went over how you have the frequency coordination, which is awesome. You even get wider frequency tuning bandwidth at this point, 40, 50, 60 megahertz. At this point, you can be pretty confident that your wireless is going to work. Also, usually at this price point, you get something called true diversity. True diversity just means that it has an extra antenna in order to protect against dropouts. With true diversity, you have to lose signal to both antennas, so that is very helpful. So for quality, like I said, basically at this point on, the tone quality is phenomenal. You can bet that this is going to be very rugged and built very well. Quality is going to be great here. So who is this for? Definitely for a touring axe, mid to large level axe. I mean, you can also get these for small axe as well if you just want to have a very solid, reliable wireless system and you have the budget for it. I play some big shows and I play some small shows. I still bring my nice Shure and Sennheiser ones to my smaller shows. I, I want my wireless to work, especially if you need to use multiple wireless at once. So this is really interesting. So if you look online, the Shure SLXD, which again is the microphone that I use, it says you can use 32 wireless at once per band. Interestingly enough, the EW100 by Sennheiser says you can only use up to 12. Doing a little more research, it could be up to 20, but either way, it's not as many as the SLXD. And they both have a very similar RF tuning bandwidth. Really interesting. I believe that's because the Sennheiser one is an analog system versus the SLXD is a digital system. Correct me in the comments in the, if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure that's why. That is something worth considering. I personally prefer digital in most situations, but both the Sennheiser EW100 and the SLXD by Sure are both fantastic systems. You really can't go wrong with it. But going off of that, you know, you wouldn't want to use more than 15-ish at this price point. Again, you need to check because that Sennheiser one has a certain frequency range and the Sure SLXD has a very similar frequency bandwidth as well. But the SLXD says you can use up to about 32, where the Sennheiser one says you can use up to 12. So you do really do have to look at that. I personally wouldn't recommend using more than 15 at the max with this one. Again, look at your system. That is not the Scott said, I can use up to 15. That is a guideline. There's a lot to RF wireless and frequency and stuff like that. This is just a guideline. For my recommendations at this price point, I really like the Shure SLXD for a microphone. It's just such a great system. That's the one that I use. What I really like about it is it has the option of just a single unit or as a dual unit, and you can get two of them in one U of rack space. So that actually already kind of has combined two wireless systems. So you don't have to get an antenna combiner for that system. I mean, you still do depending on how many you get, but that is a really nice option. I did actually just get one of those because I wanted to have my guitar and my vocals all in one rack. So that's actually what I use now. Also, there is one that I reviewed by Electro Voice, you know, EV. I use EV speakers all the time. I wasn't really familiar with their microphones. It works really well. I put it through a stress test and I was amazed at how well that wireless worked. And it also operates in a very unique frequency range, which I hadn't seen in any other wireless mic. That is also a really cool wireless microphone. As far as instruments, the Sennheiser EW100 or the Shure SLXD are both great options. Those are usually the two that I recommend at this price point. I still have my Sennheiser one because of the fact that it can be portable. So there is a version of it that has just, you know, a standard receiver, but there also is a way to get it portable. When I flew to the Middle East for a gig, which was amazing, that was a really cool gig, but I took this as my portable one because I didn't want to bring my rack. The Shure GLX D Plus is also a really good system. And like I said, I'm giving away the Shure GLX D Plus, the pedal board version, which is really cool for guitar players. This lives on your pedal board. The SLXD just has more frequency options. So that's why I went with that one. But that pedal board version is really cool for guitar players and instrument players as well. So that is also worth looking into. Again, videos for all of these are down below. As far as in your monitors, the winner at this price point is definitely the Sennheiser EW 300s. They're fantastic. So the Shure PSM 300s are about $200 cheaper. The Shure PSM 900s are like $500 more for about the same tuning bandwidth. The EW 300s I've just, I've used for years. They're so good. I see Turing Axe use those all the time. I've seen videos of Eminem and Ed Sheeran using them. I mean, they're 
awesome. I do also have a hack about how I have a portable in-ear monitor system. When I fly, that's actually my portable in-ear monitor system. Check that video out if you're interested. Really cool. And I use that one quite a bit, actually. All right. Top tier pro level wireless gear. You made it. Unless if you just use the timestamps and skipped ahead to here. But these you're looking at the Shure QLX and the ULXD systems, the Sennheiser EW500, the Shure PSM 1000s. And there's actually one by Audio-Technica that I really like, the ATW 3255. At this price point, you're going to run about 800 up to about 2000. Some of them can go even higher like the Shure PSM 1000s. But these are professional level wireless gear. And these are top of the line products that you're going to get. You get very specific features like this. You get encryption and stuff like that. So no one can eavesdrop. The Shure ULXD will flash interference if you turn it on and there's something nearby and it'll let you know that you need to scan. That's really helpful. The Audio-Technica in your monitor system, when you do a scan, it'll actually display the RF environment on a screen for you. So basically acts as an RF frequency scanner and you can see a visual of where the busy frequencies are, which is really cool. Some of these you can use with Dante, which if you're familiar with that they have that as an option so as far as frequency you're getting into a massive frequency range here so the qlxd and the ulxd has 64 megahertz of tuning bandwidth the psm 1000 has 72 megahertz ew 500 has an insane 88 megahertz and then that audio technica in-ear monitor system the reason why i put it up so high is because it goes from 470 up to 608 megahertz the full uhf frequency range the only other thing i've seen do that is the sure axiom digital which is the holy grail one that i was talking about at this point it's going to be absolutely crazy crazy if you cannot find a clear signal. So something else you might notice is that the QLXD and the ULXD have the same frequency bandwidth and you can use the same number at once. Why is the ULXD more? The ULXD also has something called high density mode where you can fit even more frequencies within a narrow bandwidth. You'll sacrifice a little bit of distance, but you can use more wireless within a very narrow bandwidth. With the QLXD and the ULXD in normal mode, within a six megahertz range, you can have 17 different wireless transmitters all at once. That's already impressive on its own. Again, that is only if there is nothing going on in that frequency range. With high density mode, you can do up to 47 within that six megahertz range. That's that's insane. It's pretty wild that you can do that. So there are extra features that you get like that. Those are really advanced features. You're gonna be doing a lot of wireless, but some people need to make sure that their wireless always works. Quality, don't even think I really need to go over it. All this stuff is top notch. Everything is great. Should be obvious who this is for. Turing Axe, high-end Axe, anyone who just wants to take their wireless seriously. Again, I'm not a massive touring artist. I'd love to be someday, but I still have wireless in this range because I want my wireless to work. Do you need multiple wireless all at once? This is definitely worth looking into. You can start getting into a lot of wireless at this point. For my recommendations, so for the microphones, sure, QLXD and ULXD, you'll notice again that they're both the same frequency range. So why would you pay more for the ULXD? Well, the ULXD does have the dual and quad models. If you're going to have a lot of wireless going on at once, it is so helpful to have them like four in one U of rack space with just a pair of antennas. The ULXD model, if you get four, that's basically already combined those antennas just to a pair of antennas, which is awesome. So with the QLXD, I recommend going that if you're going to get just like a single one. But if you want to get a double or a quad one, if your budget affords it, getting that ULXD model is definitely very helpful. As far as the instruments, I do think that the Sennheiser wins here, the Sennheiser EW500. This is one of the main wireless systems that I use all the time. At this price point for such an insane wide frequency tuning bandwidth of 88 megahertz. I mean, th that's that one wins, in my opinion, as far as for guitar and bass and stuff like that. And you might be asking, like, what's the difference between the 100 and the 500? So the 100 has less bandwidth, the 500 has more. It's not that big of a price jump that I do recommend if you have the budget for it, getting the EW500 is definitely worth it over the 100. So for in-ear monitors, mine goes to the Audio-Technica one. I wasn't very familiar with Audio-Technica until I got this system. It's such a hidden gem. I think more people need to know about it. Like I said, it has the full frequency range of 138 megahertz. It also, when you scan, you can see the environment. So you can, it'll show you like where frequencies are crowded. For that price point, $850, that's an insane deal for it. So that's what I've been using as my main in-ear monitor system. It sounds incredible. Uh, that's kind of the hidden gem. So that's usually the one that I recommend 
to people. The PSM 1000s, I'm not as familiar enough with, but I know that I see those on high-end Touring Axe. It's a true diversity system. I'm honestly not as familiar with those because I just haven't used them. They're one of the highest end in-ear monitor systems out there. And again, you have to be using a lot of wireless to really run into a problem with these types of wireless systems. Most of the time at this point, you're going to need to do some sort of antenna combining. So you're going to have to look into those as well. If you're using that much wireless, you're going to need to do some antenna combining. If you do not want to risk your wireless cutting out and you have the budget, you're not going to be sad with these wireless products for sure. Again, purchase links will be down below in the description if you want to check these out for yourself. And of course, since I mentioned it, the Holy Grail one is the Sure Axient Digital. That is such an unbelievable system. I know that I've said I was going to do a video on that for the longest time. I'm going to get it done before the end of the year. Hold me to that. I'll even link to that down below if you're interested. But that is basically it. So thank you guys for making it all the way through here. If you use those links in the description, if you did decide to get one of these, using those links is a free way to support the channel and no extra cost to you. So I would appreciate it. This video did take quite a while to put together and using those links as a free way to support the channel. But like I said, one of you is going to win this Shure GLXD Plus system for yourself. This is specifically the model meant for a pedal board. It's a brand new system by Shure. It's a really great system. The thing is, is that my pedal board is actually this guy right here. It's a Bluetooth pedal board. So I don't actually technically have a pedal board. If you want to find out why, watch my video right here. It's a fantastic wireless system. But the thing is, is I'd rather give it back to my community. I just recently passed 50,000 subscribers, which is incredible. I just am really grateful and I'd rather give back to you guys. So I really appreciate it. So in order to win this wireless, so first of all, you do have to subscribe. So subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and then leave a comment down below. You can say whatever you want in the comment section. However, and I, I, I feel dumb doing this. I know I just released a video for one of my favorite pieces of music that I've ever written. So you have to go subscribe to my original music channels and leave a comment on the video that I just released, which I will have a link to down below so you can find the correct video. So if you're subscribed there and you left a comment on that video, as well as a comment on this video, you will be entered to win the wireless. If you've done original music, you know that you basically have to beg people to listen to your music. I accept it. I will announce the winner on this date right here. Just remember, I will never, ever, ever, ever ask you for money, period. Not for shipping, nothing. So if someone hits you up, pretends that they're me, and they say, oh, you have to pay for shipping for this product or something like that, they are a scammer. Sometimes scammers will show up when I do giveaways. So that's basically it. Thank you guys again for watching. If you made it to the end of this video, please do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. Hitting the thumbs up button is a free way to support the channel, and it does feed the YouTube algorithm gods to recommend my channel to more people so I would sincerely appreciate it. I do have a video recommendation for you. I have a video on five common mistakes when using wireless music gear. I actually made all of them except for one when I started using wireless gear. I think it's definitely very important to understand these very common mistakes. So check out that video. And also, if you are looking in the cheap department, check out my What is the Best Cheap Wireless Part 3. I think that's actually the most important video as far as cheap wireless products. So check out both of those videos by clicking the links on your screen now. Thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Scott Ewell Music. I'm also on other social media pages, but Instagram's my favorite one. Leave a comment down below with your favorite wireless in which of the different tiers. I'm definitely curious which wireless you guys like the best. Thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.